Hey yo gamers, Singchul 2 just dropped and she's sick. Yulan is the newest Hydro unit and she kicks... uh... Bow. She's a pretty flexible unit overall and she'll make you wish you were a treasure hoarder. Her hydro damage is great, but she also has some other perks as well. So today I'm going to be going over everything you need to know about Yidlan, like build, weapons, constellations, and teams. If you enjoy this type of video, make sure to let me know down in the comments and by leaving a like on the video. And if you want to see live content, make sure to check out my Twitch at twitch.tv slash Braxophone. Anyways, without further ado, my name is Braxophone and let's talk about Yidlan. So Yulan's kit is pretty cool. It lets her fulfill the role of Sing Chou, but with higher damage potential and damage buffs. First off, her basic attack is cool as heck. Second, her charged attack has a special effect called Breakthrough Barb, where she can shoot an arrow almost instantly after being out of combat for 5 seconds. It deals a decent chunk of damage based on Yulan's max HP, but it has a really big area of damage too. Essentially, once you switch onto Yulan, you can shoot an arrow super quick for a decent chunk of Hydro damage before you actually go into her skill. If Yulan hasn't been out of combat for 5 seconds, her charged attacks will be normal and not have area damage though. Her elemental skill is freaking awesome, I love it. Basically, she just turns into Wraith from Apex Legends, she becomes temporarily invisible and starts to sprint really fast. Any enemy that you come in contact with is going to get marked, and when you leave invisibility, they'll explode with hydro damage based on Yolan's HP. A lot of enemies actually get staggered when you activate her skill too, and one of the best things about it is that it has a tap variant and a hold variant, so if you just need quick energy or damage, you can tap, and if you need to mark a bunch of enemies, you can hold it down and tap again to cancel. It honestly lasts a really long time and you don't really need the whole 3 seconds, and it's on a 10 second cooldown so you can use it pretty often. Lastly, it generates 4 particles on use, which is a pretty decent amount. Now, Yulan's burst is the thing that makes her comparable to Sing Chou. When you activate it, it deals a hit of hydro damage around Yulan, and then whenever you normal attack with any characters, she shoots the equivalent of basically rain swords at those enemies, and she gets 3 of them per attack. The damage is actually pretty high, and with decent investment, will actually outscale Sing Chou damage. But it is worth noting that her Hydro application is actually worse than Sing Cho's, and she can actually stop Hu Tao from vaping some of her hits that Sing Cho would normally allow. She has a 70 cost burst, which is lower than Sing Cho, but she has some energy issues that I'll explain later in the video. Her burst also doesn't snapshot buffs, so there's no need to force buffs on her and try to retain them since she's going to be off field most of the time. Now Yulan's passives are pretty cool. Her first one increases her max HP based on how many different elements are in your party, which will affect her damage by a little bit, and depending on what character Characters you have in your party can also affect their damage. But her second passive is just really good. It increases your on field character's damage by 3.5% every second, up to a max of 50% damage bonus when her burst is active. Now, I tested this for about 30 minutes because I had a hard time believing it, but the buff exists on any active character and doesn't reset. It just keeps counting. So, no matter who's on the field, they're getting an increasing damage buff to literally all damage that they deal. It's not going to be a stat that shows on the stat screen, and it's dynamic, so even characters who who usually snapshot buffs can't actually snapshot your lawns. It's a pretty solid buff and it's free basically since you want to spam her burst anyways and overall makes her an amazing supporting unit as well. Lastly, she collects 25% more resources on Lua commissions which basically means she's Kuching Power Creep. Now as far as talent priority goes, you want to level her burst first and then her skill and then her normal attacks if you're going to level them at all. Her burst is the main source of her damage and the best part about her kit and her skill actually deals a decent chunk of damage so you do want to level that but normal attacks are something you're probably not going to end up using because most of her kit scales off of HP, except her normal attacks scale off of attack as usual, so you won't be able to get much damage out of them if you're building her the best way possible. Anyways, now that you know everything about her kit, let's talk about her artifacts because this is a little complicated. Yulan has a couple things you need to keep in mind when you're building her. First off, since her skill and burst are essentially all based on her HP stat, her attack stat becomes 100% useless. What that means is artifact and weapon attack stats don't even really matter. You just want to go for things like HP, energy recharge, damage bonus, and eventually crit. For artifact stats on Yulan, she's actually pretty straightforward. You don't want to spend resin on artifact domains before AR45, because at AR45 you get access to the highest level domain, which guarantees a 5 star artifact every run. Before 
For AR-45, you want to look for any artifact set that has energy recharge. That can be sets like Exile or Scholar. Again, this is because Attack doesn't really do anything for her. She needs a lot of energy recharge to function, and these sets will help with that early on. But more importantly are her stats. For stats in the early game, you want to aim for energy recharge or HP sands, an HP or hydro damage goblet, and an HP circlet. You'll have trouble farming ideal crit stats before AR-45, so I suggest you avoid trying to force a crit circlet, and I would just go with HP. For higher AR players at 45 plus though, you have essentially two options. Some players might advocate for something like Two Heart of the Depths and Two Noblesse, but Yalan's easiest set to build will actually be Four Piece Emblem of Severed Fate. The reason being that Yalan will need a lot of energy recharge to get her burst back quickly, and Emblem rewards high energy recharge with elemental burst damage. With that being said, if you have absurdly good energy and crit stats, you can opt for Four Piece Noblesse to buff your team's attack by 20% whenever you use her burst. But overall, I highly recommend emblem, it's just so easy and rewarding to play, and again she really likes energy recharge. For main stats, you want to prioritize an energy recharger HP sands, a hydro damage goblet, and a crit or HP circlet. Whether you pick HP, energy recharge, or crit main stats, it's just going to completely depend on your substats. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you have high enough energy recharge first, and then make sure that you have a balanced 1 to 2 crit ratio of at least 50 crit rate and 100 crit damage. If you're safely there, an HP circlet or sands can actually improve her overall damage, so if you get good crit stats on that HP circlet, don't throw it away. I'll let you know how much much energy recharge she needs in a moment, but real quick, the substats Yalan wants are energy recharge, crit stats, and then HP percent. Okay, so this next section is sort of long, but I feel like it needs to be emphasized. If you don't care about the specifics with energy recharge or weapons, you can skip through it, but I think it's pretty important to know. Energy recharge on Yalan is complicated. The best way I can describe it is this. Singsho has an 80 cost burst and generates 5 particles on his skill. His best option a lot of the time is Sacrificial Sword because it makes him super easy to play. You can use your skill twice, it deals high damage, and then you get a ton of particles back. And with Sacrificial and around 180% energy recharge, you can get almost his entire burst back in 2 skills very quickly. The rest of his burst will come back from miscellaneous particles. Meanwhile though, Yanlan has a 70 cost burst, which is lower than Singsho, but generates 4 particles per skill. Essentially you're getting 20% less particles particles for a burst that hasn't been reduced by 20% cost. Essentially, your energy bank is going to fill up less proportionately to someone like Singcho, but on top of that, the higher the energy recharge gets, the bigger the disparity becomes because Singcho generates 5 particles and Yalan only generates 4. It also takes longer to cast her skill than Singcho's skills. The length of the skill is kind of a non-issue to be honest because you can just tap it, but there is a problem with Sacrificial Bow. Namely, the energy recharge stat on that weapon is just really low in comparison to Sacrificial Sword. In order to have her burst on cooldown, you either need to use her skill twice per rotation or have a ton of energy recharge. The easiest thing to do would be to build Yalan with around 200% energy recharge on Emblem and use her skill off of cooldown. You might find after playing around with Yalan that you need even more though. There are things to change that energy requirement, but Yalan isn't as easy on energy recharge as Singcho. Luckily for us, there's a great tool to help us out with that. Favonius Warbow is a completely free to play bow that you get for beating the Monstat story around AR20. It has a pretty low base attack, but because attack on Yalan doesn't matter, you're basically just getting a ton of energy recharge and a passive that generates white particles when you crit. Because they're white particles too, you can share them with your team if you need to. It's an amazing weapon, and the damage difference between it and other weapons is near nothing, because once again, attack doesn't really matter on Yalan. Now, Elegy is also extremely good on Yalan, and if you have Elegy, I'd recommend using it on her over Favonius if you have the stats to support it, because it'll share attack and elemental mastery with your team and increase their overall damage. Damage. In my opinion, the best weapon for Yalan is actually Elegy for most teams. With that being said, the best free to play option is easily Favonius Warbo. Now, keep in mind, guys, most of this is based off of my testing, and not everyone's gonna have the same stats and results, but that's just what I noticed about Yalan's weapons and playing her for over a week, and what I've been seeing when looking at Yalan damage calculations. In a worst case scenario where you're maybe scrapped your Favonius Warbo, you can use Sacrificial Bow, but it has lower energy recharge stats, and it won't be as good as Favonius, generally speaking. Personally, Personally, I was fine with about 200% energy recharge with Favonius Warbow and Abyss, and when I ran her with Singcho in Double Hydro, she only needed around 150. But keep in mind that this is an Abyss with a lot of enemies generating a lot of HP particles and a lot of death particles. And without 
Aquavonius and not in double hydro teams, you'll need a lot more energy recharge than 200%, probably closer to 240 to 250. Just to be clear too, it depends on the content as in how many enemies there are and how often you use your skill. If you're not doing insanely accurate rotations, then it's probably not a bad idea to try to use her skill on cooldown until you can actually activate her burst. But that's the main reason you would opt for an energy recharge sans over in HP sans, because if you can't get her burst up consistently, then her damage won't actually matter anyways. Lastly, I'll mention this in the team section, but a character that generates a lot of energy like Fischl or Raiden can also get rid of a lot of Yulan's energy needs, and Yulan fits into some teams with them pretty well. But now that I've told you guys sort of what I believe to be her best in slot options, we can move on to other weapons as well because obviously not everyone's going to want to play these and she does have a signature bow. So for those of you who were confused by me saying Elegy is her best bow, let me explain it a little bit better. Aqua Simulacra is her signature weapon, and it's an amazing weapon on almost every bow user in the game. It gives straight up damage bonus, which is different from attack and directly affects her damage. It also has a huge crit damage stat and definitely is worth looking into getting if you have the pulls to spend for your bow characters. But with that being said, it's hard to justify running it unless you have insanely good substats. What I mean by that is that you can run Aqua Simulacra and the damage will be higher, but if you don't get her burst up every rotation, your overall damage in a fight is lower anyways. You need to prioritize energy over damage if you really want to get the most out of her, because funny enough, the more times you can use her burst, the more damage you get. Once you've reached that threshold of energy recharge, meaning you're at about 240%, someone on your team has Favonius or you're running double hydro with Singcho and around 150 energy recharge, then Aqua Simulacra will increase your damage by a fair bit. The same thing can apply to Moon's Moon, where if you already have the energy requirements, it can also be pretty good. Now there is a free to play bow called Fading Twilight and you can get it this patch. It looks like it's supposed to be really good for Yulan, but compared to Favonius, which has double the energy recharge at max level and generates extra particles, you're essentially trading a little bit more damage for a lot of uptime. So I still highly recommend Favonius over this weapon, even though it does work for her if you don't have Favonius available. It's not the end of the world if you use it, it just doesn't offer a lot of energy recharge, which again is something that she just really needs. So quickly to recap, Aqua Simulator Lacra is the best for damage, but will be the hardest to build because you need a ton of energy. Moon's Moon is fine for damage if you don't have Aqua, but I still recommend an energy recharge weapon first. Elegy for the end is the best bow for her and your team in my opinion, because it buffs everyone and has an energy recharge main stat. Favonius Warbow is easily the best free-to-play option, and it's not even close. If Favonius isn't available, you have Fading Twilight, which offers a bit of damage and a little bit of energy, and Sacrificial Bow is sort of the last option you want to look at for weapons on her since attack stats don't matter, but it's not quite as good as Favonius because its energy recharge stat is lower. So Yulan is an interesting case for teams, because she has best teams, but she kind of fits in most places. I want to show you four solid Yulan teams that work for me, and hopefully you'll think one of these is fun too. The first team is actually a double hydro team featuring Hu Tao, Xingqiu, Yulan, and Zhongli. Now most people think double hydro is bad because hydro resonance is kind of a joke, but it's hard for any team with two Xingqiu's to be bad. Hu Tao will never miss a vaporize with these two, and Zhongli will decrease enemy resistances and protect Hu Tao. On top of that, Yulan slowly increases damage of your on-field character, so Hu Tao will continue to hit harder as she continues to charge attack. You can throw Elegy on Yulan and you'll gain Elemental Mastery on Hu Tao and the rest of your party, which will buff her by a significant amount. Also, if you're feeling spicy, in Double Hydro you can actually switch Singchal's weapon over to something like Jade Cutter if you wanted to, assuming that both he and Yulan do have decent energy recharge stats, and you can deal a ton more damage. In this team, you should use Singchal's burst before Yulan's though, because it has a longer cooldown and if you use it first, it actually lines up with Yelan's burst better. And as a side note, you can actually replace Hu Tao with Yoimiya or Diluc, and the team will be functionally similar, just using a Pyro Damage Dealer to reverse Vaporize and multiply damage. One thing you should know about Yelan though is that if you do run her solo with Hu Tao, there is the potential for some hits not to Vaporize, so be careful with that. Now the second team is... surprise, it, it's national. Nowadays, this team consists of Bennett, Xiangling, Xingqiu, and Sucrose, but since Yelan functions like Xingqiu, you can use her in national to help Xiangling Vaporize instead. Since her damage is higher and she increases your on-field character's damage, she's an upgrade to the team. If you don't know how National works, the basic rundown is that you use Bennett's Burst and Sucrose's Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers to snapshot a buff onto Xiangling with her Burst and continuously normal attack to apply Hydro to enemies to multiply Xiangling's damage. It's super strong and free-to-play friendly and overall just a really
really solid team. You can also replace Sucrose with Raiden to make Raiden national, and in this team, Yelan's energy needs go way down. You can run her with a lot less energy recharge, and she'll still get her burst because of Raiden's battery. Overall, I like this team a lot. It's really simple, really straightforward, and it gets a lot of value. The third team I like using with Yelan is actually a Eula team, featuring Eula, Fischl, Yelan, and a flex spot. The flex can be Diona, Sayu, or Jean, but I personally like Diona best for her shield. This team takes advantage of Yelan's passive. Since Eula takes up field time for her burst, ideally her burst will be close to the 50% damage bonus when it goes off and have itself boosted by a bunch. Fischl is there for energy generation, so in this team, Yelan doesn't actually need quite as much. And now, I actually tried Raiden here, but the main issue was that a lot of characters wanted to fight for field time. Eula wanted the field, Yelan wanted the field to try to get particles, and of course Raiden wants the field for her burst. It makes it hard to get a consistent rotation. But with Fischl, her field time is pretty minimal and she still deals solid damage. This team isn't great for every single abyss, but it's pretty fun nonetheless and overall it's functionally good. The last team that I want to show is Taser, which is probably one you all know and love by now. Or maybe you hate it because everyone talks about it. I don't know, you do you. Taser has a lot of variants, but the main one is Sucrose, Singcho, Fischl, and Beto. In this Taser variant, you're gonna replace Singcho and output more damage overall. You don't get a ton of value from Yelan's passive if you're swirling with Sucrose, since she's built mostly EM and doesn't have great attack stats to take advantage of, but it'll still help to some extent. I really like this team. The one downside is that you won't have a healer though, because because Singcho does provide a tiny bit of healing and Yelan doesn't. Alternatively, you could go the double Hydro route and run Ayato Taser or Kokomi Taser, but then you have to replace Fischl or Beto, and both of them contribute a lot to the team, so play at your own risk. Generally speaking, guys, if you're confused on when you should use Yelan or Singcho, the easiest way to think about it is that Singcho gives you healing and damage reduction, so if you're playing a team without a shield or with a flimsy shield, you probably want Singcho. If you have a shield on your team already, though, or if you need your main damage dealer to do more, Yelan is your girl. Yelan has a ton of flexibility since she can function in basically any team slot Singchu can as well, but her high damage and passive contribute a lot to different teams, and honestly, as we see new characters release, I can't wait to see who else she pairs with. Alright, but now let's move on to Whale Talk. Constellations on Yelan are a mixed bag of value, but generally speaking, they're all pretty good. So I want to quickly go over them with you so you can decide whether or not they're worth it. So you know how I mentioned earlier that Yelan needs a ton of energy recharge? Yeah, well C1 actually makes that number a lot lower. It gives you another charge on your skill, and it essentially lets you do 20 second rotations more effectively, since you can cast it twice in a row once you've waited for both charges to come back. It's decent, it's not something that you need, but it definitely helps with your energy. Meanwhile, Constellation 2 adds more damage to Yelan's burst by dealing extra hydro damage roughly every 2 seconds when attacking. It's a decent increase in damage. Constellation 3 levels are burst by 3, and it's a pretty solid damage increase. C4 increases your party's max HP by 10% for every enemy you mark with her skill. It can only go up to 40%, but it lasts for 25 seconds, which is a pretty long time considering her skill is on a 10 second cooldown. It'll buff characters like Kokomi, Ayoto, Yulan herself, Zhongli, and Hu Tao. Overall, it's a cool constellation, and depending on the team, can actually be a damage gain for the whole cast. C5 increases their skill by 3, and C6 is essentially what Yoimiya should have been. It makes it so that when you cast her burst, it turns her next 5 normal attacks into breakthrough barb charged attacks that deal 156% of normal ones damage. It also deals area damage because again, breakthrough barbs have the AoE. I don't know why they gave this to her and not to Yoimiya. It's actually an insane increase to burst damage from Yulan, and it gives her the ability to be a powerful main DPS as well. Yulan's constellations all increase her damage or quality of life in some way, and you can't really go wrong with any of them in particular. But with that being said, I don't think 5-star constellations are ever worth it since they cost so much. And I wouldn't go in on Yelan's constellations personally unless you really hate stacking energy recharge or plan on going for C6. Yelan is a solid unit, and honestly one of my favorites that's come out in a while. Not only is her damage good, but her kit is pretty cool, her animations and personality in-game are amazing, and she's incredibly flexible when it comes to team building. Yeah, her energy needs are pretty big, which is why Emblem of Severed Fate and Favonius Warbow are so valuable, but there's basically no way for her to be bad, considering that she applies tons of Hydro and deals solid damage. Combine that with Singcho's haircut and an awesome support passive ability, and you have yourself an amazing unit named Yelan. Thanks for watching everyone. Everyone, let me know down in the comments if you're rolling for Yelan or if she came home. If you enjoyed, make sure to hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. Once again, I go live on Twitch a few days a week at twitch.tv slash Braxophone, so make sure to come on by for live content, account reviews, and just other games. Enjoy your Yelans, everyone, and I'll catch you next time.